Hi, everybody. It's Marjorie Waldo at Arts Garage, and I'm here with Emmanuel Sasson today, who is part of our Singer Songwriter Showcase on November 7th. Thank you for, so much for coming and meeting Thank with you. me. I'm excited for the audience to get to know you. So you. tell me about what you do. So your genre is alternative rock, right? Correct. Uh, I'm a singer, songwriter, and a musician. I'm also a producer. And uh, I write my own songs um, based on personal experiences, and I put them out into the world. That's awesome. You started, you're, you're very young, in my definition anyway, but you started when you were barely walking. You, you started something at six years old, am I right? Correct, yeah. What'd you start? Um, so I started playing guitar at six years old. I asked my dad if he could give me guitar lessons, if he could get a teacher, and I did. And then after I learned guitar, I taught myself piano, bass, drums, ukulele, and then I started singing. So. When you were six, um, your bio says that you played guitar so much after your dad got it for you that you had to dip your fingers into ice yeah. to uh, calm the ends. Do you have big calluses on the ends of your fingers from playing? And sometimes I do because I, I don't really play that much anymore, but when I was younger, yeah, I did have, have really bad calluses. Yeah, you know, um, Max, the only other person I've heard that ice thing, Max Weinberg, who is the drummer for Bruce Springsteen. Yep. and has performed here with his own Max Weinberg's um, jukebox. It's a really cool, like, sing-along show for people my age and a little bit older. Um, and he has, a, he requests at each venue that he performs a large, like, a five-gallon paint bucket of ice mm -hmm. to stand after he drums for a couple of hours. So right. I, I heard say that. So... Um, okay, so you you were doing all kinds of other things. You at seven started singing. Yes. By the time you were fourteen, and you're a multitasker as well. I can see. Yeah, so, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. You play piano, drums, bass, ukulele. You sing. You play the guitar. What's your favorite thing? My favorite is probably guitar. Because um, I always, every time I write a song, first thing I do is pick up a guitar. So it's always been natural instinct. Um, piano, I use different instruments for different forms of expression. I usually go to piano when I feel like not really writing a song, kind of just playing my feelings. You know what I mean? So, yeah. One of the things you said, um, I liked this. You said that as for your songwriting, you turn everyday challenges and pain into your inspiration and that songwriting is your therapy. It helps you release your emotions that you don't know how to express through speaking. So I think that's very interesting. So the piano is when you don't feel like putting a song, you just wanna play your feelings. What's the ukulele? You know, I haven't touched ukulele in about a year and a half. <laughs> but I, use, I usually bring it to uh, friends' houses or campfires when I want to kind of like play covers and sing along and have fun with friends. I don't really write songs on ukulele that much anymore. You use the guitar mostly for songwriting. Correct, yeah, yeah. And when you write, do you start with lyrics or do you start with a melody? What, what starts a song for you? Um, both. Depending on the way I'm feeling, I could play a chord, try to find a chord that works, and then I'll kind of, I like mumble a little bit, try to mumble a melody, and after I have a decent melody, then I add words to it. Yeah, I write a little bit of poetry, and for me, it's like a one-liner that I think of, and mm -hmm. then I bring that, to, I have a pile of one-liners, and when I'm feeling it, I'll pull one out and, and finish it. So I wondered, every songwriter I think is different. So for yeah. you, it's the melody that starts. Pretty much. Most of the time, yeah. Or sometimes I'll literally pick up a guitar and then I have a full song that just comes out. It really depends. So You just graduated from mm -hmm. high school about a year ago, am I right? Correct. And you released your first album what, the same time you graduated from high school, basically. Mm -hmm. And that was called Smoke and Mirrors. And you did really well on Spotify. It sounds like you had over 50,000 streams on Spotify. Yeah. So talk about that album a little, Smoke and Mirrors. What's it about? That album is like a little time capsule for me because there, and sometimes I wish I didn't release it and there are other times, well, I wouldn't be here without that album um, because I personally, like every artist thinks they can, they can do better. You know, <laughs> that was my first piece of work, but the album is uh, my main, like, 
I don't know. I just, I feel like I needed to put that out. It was when I was going through a really rough period of time, middle school and the beginning of high school. I talk about depression, anxiety, uh, friendships, friends that I've lost, relationships. And um, it really led me uh, to, up to this new release, uh, these new release of music. So without that, I wouldn't be releasing the music that I have now. It's really cool. And I think it's important to remember that when you're an artist, you want to be able to watch your evolution as an artist, right? So think 10 years from now how cool it will be to go back and see where you started. I think that's kind of cool. So try not to touch it. Try to just love yeah. it. <laughs> Trying to accept it and just let it be. You know? Yeah, let it be what it was because it was you at the time, what you needed to say and mm -hmm. express. I think it's really cool. Thank so you. you're working on a new album, which I think you're not going to tell me the name of, but what is the focal point of it? Um, really, I think the big thing is just like being self-aware. Like, I, I feel like now I really know where I, where I'm at mentally. I know where I want to, I know what I want to do with my life. I know where I want to go. And this whole year, 2020 has been a roller coaster for a lot of people. And a lot of the songs that are on there, I wrote during quarantine. So, um, I put together that I've been putting together this album for a year and a half already, but, um, it has 10 tracks and four deluxe tracks. I can tell you that. Okay. So I'm super excited for that. Um, yeah, it's my best work, I think. Really? Yeah. So what do you, when you say, and you can tell me that it's, mm, um, my family used to say Nanya when it was none of your business, but you say you kind of know who you are and where you want to go now. You feel like you have more self-awareness. Can you tell us something about what you, what you want for your future? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, there's a theme in my songs, I don't know if anybody really has noticed where I always talk about running away. Okay. And I, either it can be from myself or from uh, the mental state, like the current mental state that I'm in or physically running away from uh, home or whatever it is. I just feel like now I know where I wanna run away. I wanna move across the country. I wanna become a producer. I want to go to college. I wanna do all these things. And I feel like now I'm 100% sure and um, the, the album basically talks about that in a more poetic way <laughs> right. and um, like relationships that didn't work out and that have led me to the to where I am now and things like that so I think that's very exciting and thank you for sharing it with us thank you. so okay so this raw emotional connection that you create with your music mm -hmm. um, I want you to tell me if that's what it is that you want your listener to feel. I mean, what is it you would like an audience at Arts Garage when you're performing? What vibe do you want with them? What, what do you want to happen when they're listening to your music? I honestly just want them to feel less alone. And as I say this every time, but I want, like, if they see me performing, I want to be like, oh my God, Emmanuel feels the way I feel no way that's dope like <laughs> like i'm not alone and because i've always felt so alone um in a lot of situations and a lot of things that i went through you know a lot of people don't talk about mental health it's such an important subject that people don't talk about and people avoid the conversation so i'm trying to make people have that conversation with my music so i hope it'll make them feel loved and a little warm inside i think that's beautiful and i think that when you use a vehicle like music it's such a universal thing music the arts in general that when you use a vehicle that's so um well i don't know that gentle is the right word but i kind of mean it it doesn't even really matter what genre of music you're listening to it kind of cradles you in and takes you on this journey and you feel a little safe wrapped in the song at least i do like that made me want to cry a little music to me is a I've heard other people say it, it's not my expression, but uh, the soundtrack for our lives, right? So if right. you have a, a song that I know from a certain period in my life, I can tell you how I felt, what I was experiencing, how that song made me feel. And mm -hmm. I think it's cool that you want the audience to, to feel that connection with you. I think that's beautiful, so. Thank you. All right, Emmanuel, I'm very excited about the show. November 7th, there are three singer-songwriters that are going to be performing, and I look forward to meeting you and hearing you perform. Of course, I look forward to meeting you too. Thank you for having me. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. You know, I'm grateful to have you on the stage, and thank you for taking the time. I know you work a lot, so thanks for taking the time to do this Zoom interview so the audience can get to know you a little bit. Of course. Thank you so much. Okay, see you on the 7th. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.